Well, Texas Congressman Ron Paul hoping for the best in South Carolina, but focusing more of his attention on a handful of caucus states like Nevada, Minnesota, where he could get much more support. Paul talked about that with Neil Cavuto earlier today. Well, it's, it's very important, but it's not do or die. You know, we expect to pick up some delegates as we have continued to do so, and we'll continue on. Doug Weed is an advisor for the Ron Paul campaign, and he joins us now with more. Thanks for joining us, Doug. Hey, thank you, Heather. Great to be with you. So, first of all, you heard Congressman Paul say there, uh, <laughs> not do or die. In the, GO8, or the, in the 2008 GOP primary, though, Congressman Paul finished fifth in South Carolina with a 3.6% of the vote. <laughs> this time last year, he was polling in the single digits. Now he has increased his popularity. What would be a good finish for you? Well, he's right when he said it doesn't matter. Uh, he's the only evangelical in the race now, which is going to be big in a lot of Southern contests. He's the only veteran in the race now. So we think we're going to do very well, but we're very encouraged by Newt Gingrich's rise because it busts this thing wide open. This is not over. And that's very good for Ron Paul. There is no way that the nominee, whoever it is, can win a general election without Ron Paul's support and without his minions. And there's no path to the nomination for Newt Gingrich without Ron Paul's help because there are 500 and some delegates that will be chosen and uh, Newt Gingrich is not even in the ballot in those states. So we're in this to win and we will be players whatever happens. So that being said, you said yourself without Ron Paul's support, no one else can win. If he does make that decision to bow out of the race, will Congressman Paul support whomever wins the GOP nomination? <laughs> He's not bowing out of the race. We're not even talking about that. As I said, we're, we're in this to win. I'm, you remember the old Agatha Christie movie, uh, and then there were none, you know, ten little Indians? Well, and now there are four, and five candidates have dropped out of this race. You only need money to stay in it. We're staying in it. And we're going to be competitors, uh, so we're not talking about throwing support to anybody. They're welcome to throw their support to us. I'm just pointing out that there is a rationale for Ron Paul to be in this race. There has not been a single delegate chosen in Iowa. Nobody talks about that on air, but I'll mention it. Not one delegate. And when you had this beauty contest in Iowa, afterwards they said, those of you who want to stay to select the delegation to the state can stay. The Ron Paul people stayed. So we are reshaping the Republican Party, and we are winning delegates. Thousand delega 2,000 delegates, less than 30 or 40 have even been selected yet. So that's really the campaign strategy at this point. I know that it was said the more delegates, this is what Congressman Paul said, quote, the more delegates I have, the more leverage I have. So we'll go after the delegates, and we have staying power. So you're in it to win Heather? it. You're going to run the course. We are, and Heather, you know, earlier you were talking about electability, and it's rather comical because you ask in your exit polls, who do you think is electable? But in your same polls, the Washington Post ABC poll that was quoted on this channel just about an hour ago, and the CNN poll that's now two days old, in those polls, there's only two candidates who beats Barack Obama within the margin of error, and one of those is Ron Paul. That doesn't get a lot of attention, but it gets attention inside our campaign. All right, well, I have to wrap you up. Good luck today and moving forward on Thanks, the Florida Heather. January 31st. I guess we'll <laughs> see you there. Doug Weed, thank you very much. Thank you, Heather.